Hi friends, welcome to Kraku's online classes. My name is Saili Kale. I'm one of the co-founders of Kraku. Uh, we uh, help thousands of students every year to crack CAT. I'm, a, I'm an alumnus of IIM Ahmedabad and uh, last year I'm very proud to say that we helped 65 students get over 99 percentile. So these online classes are our effort to help our students cross the 99 percentile threshold. So we hope that through this uh, classroom, you will get all the tools necessary to cross that particular threshold. In this uh, online class, we are going to discuss logical representation of uh, information. Uh, LRs are uh, getting harder with each cat. Generally, most students find it very difficult to decode the information given in LRs. Generally, what happens is that if you understand the LR, you represent the information in the LR and write it down, then answering the question becomes trivially easy. But the crucial step that is understanding the LR, representing it in the right format that is suitable for answering the information, that step is generally the hardest step. Uh, this representation can take many forms. It can be in the form of a Venn diagram, a table, a uh, roots or networks chart, or a, uh, uh, as in the case of this uh, uh, video, in the form of logical expressions. So today we are going to discuss how to represent information as logical expressions. We do this so that we can distill down information into more manageable bits. Uh, when you're given with like a huge passage of information, it's difficult to keep all of that into your head at the same time. Usually you can't keep that much information in your head. But because we are so used to solving point questions, uh, if we write these down as expressions, we can work on them and then solve the question. In quant, what do you do? You read the problem. As you read the problem, you write down the expression that the problem translates to. You solve those equations and you get to the answer. Similarly, over here, as you read the problem, write down the logical expressions. Once you have the logical expressions, you can solve them to find the answer. It makes LR problems far more manageable. So now let's take a look at the basic elements of logical expressions. So let's begin with the very basics as far as logical expressions are concerned. A statement is basically an event or a state of being. For example, B is wearing a blue shirt or A is a part of the team. So we represent these as like capital letters, like capital A represents event A or capital B represents uh, event B. So whenever we say that A has occurred, we say that uh, uh, event A has occurred, we say the truth value of A is uh, true. So truth value is basically a uh, value assigned to say that whether an event has occurred or not. Uh, so if it is true, it means that the event has occurred. If it is false, that it means that that event has not occurred. So if uh, the event is A is part of the team, then the truth value of A being true means A is part of the team. And if it is false, it means that A is not part of the team. Therefore, truth values are a bit confusing. We'll understand them better if we apply them in uh, problems. So let's keep that for now and we'll see that later. Now let's take a look at the second most important basic element as far as logical expressions are concerned. So the most basic uh, logical operand is the negation operand. So negation is uh, written as the tilde sign. So uh, say suppose the statement is A. Uh, negation of A or not A represents that uh, the we invert the truth value of A. So suppose uh, A is that I went to church. Not of A means I did not go to church. Similarly, if event P is that uh, X is part of the team, not P means that X is not part of the team. So this is a quick way of uh, representing negative information that is something is not the case. The second operator that we'll see is the OR operator. So whenever we say that A or B is true, we represent it as this. This is A, a small v is, uh, represents the logical OR, OR operand and B. So this is A or B is true. So for example, if we want to say that either P or Q should be part of the team, we'll write it as this. P or Q is true. So one of these two statements has to be true. The only uh, condition which violates this uh, condition is that if both are not part of the team. So this uh, combined thing will be true if P is true or if Q is true or if both are true. 
Uh, only case when the condition would be violated of P or Q being in the team is if both are not part of the team. So this is the logical or. The third basic operand is the logical and. We write it like this A caret sign B. So this says that A and B. So suppose that we want to say that both P and Q should be part of the team. So we will put that as P and Q are part of the team. Now this uh, condition is violated if either of P or Q are not part of the team. Therefore, both of them have to be part of the team or both of them have to be true for the result to be true. Now that we have understood the basic logical operands, let's take a look at the conditional statements. So these are the statements that you generally find in LR sets like team selection where you say that if A is part of the team, then B should also be part of the team. So the general format is if A, then B. So this means that A implies B. So if P is part of the team, then we say if P is part of the team, that implies that Q is part also of the team. Then we say P implies Q. Therefore, from this we mean that if P is part of the team, then Q must always be part of the team. However, this does not mean that if Q is part of the team, then P should be part of the team. This does not imply that Q implies P. These two are two different statements. However, we can say from this that if P implies Q, then negation of Q implies negation of P. That is, if Q is not part of the team, we can infer that P is not part of the team. Uh, let us take a simple example to understand this. Suppose if we say that if it, rains, uh, if it rains heavily, then the schools will be closed. So from this we can say that if it rains heavily, the schools will be closed. But if the schools are closed, we cannot say that it has rained heavily. Schools can be closed for other reasons also. So this implication is only in one direction. However, we can say that if the school is open, we can say for sure that it has not rained heavily. So the negative implication on the other side is true. But the uh, positive implication from schools close to heavy rains will not be inferable. So this is a single uh, simple conditional statement. A biconditional statement is written as if and only if. So if we say that uh, a uh, if uh, a will if a uh, so if we say that b will happen if and only if a happens then it is a biconditional statement so it is written as follows so a double sided arrow b so this means that if a occurs then b should occur and if b occurs then a should occur basically both these statements would be true together and false together therefore like suppose consider the uh, statement Sita will join Harvard. So Sita joins Harvard if and only if she gets a 100% scholarship. So from this we can say that uh, if she receives 100% scholarship, she will join Harvard. If she joins Harvard, we can infer that she received 100% scholarship. If she does not receive 100% scholarship, she will not join Harvard. If she has not joined Harvard, that means she did not receive the 100% scholarship. So we can make four of these inferences based on this statement. So essentially, A by conditional B translates to A implies B, B implies A, negation of B implies negation of A, and negation of A implies negation of B. So as we saw in uh, single direction conditional, uh, P implies Q means negation of Q implies negation of P. But uh, in a biconditional, the other side is also the case. So B implies A and because B implies A, negation of A implies negation of B. So a biconditional works both ways. It's basically a simple conditional, uh, two simple conditionals combined together. Now that we have understood these two con con uh, conditional statements, let's take a look at some of the additional conditional statements. So one of the common conditional statements that comes is at least one of uh, A, B and C should be part of the team. So suppose the conditional statement is 
if p is part of the team then at least one of a b or c should be part of the team so we can write this as p implies a or b or c so this is basically a three way or so this statement is true if either one of the three that is either a or b or c is part of the team the only time this statement is false if if uh, none of the three are part of the team therefore we can say that p implies a or b or c now the additional condition that generally comes in team selection is that exactly one of a b and c should be part of the team so so a, exactly one of a b and c can be written as a only a or only b or only c now only a can be written as a and negation of b and negation of c or only b can be written as negation of a and b and negation of c and only c can be written as negation of a and negation of b and c so you can see that writing exactly one of a b and c can be written as this long expression so this is basically either only a is true or only b is true or only c is true now that we have understood how to express these conditions as logical expressions let's take a look at de morgan's law so these are basic laws these help us ident uh, apply negation to a group operand so suppose we are told that a and b together cannot be part of the team so we are basically saying that not of a and b so de morgan's laws basically say that negation of a and b is equal to negation of a or negation of b so basically this means in common term it means if a and b both can't be part of the team then either a is not part of the team or b is not part of the team so negation of a and b implies negation of a or negation of b so essentially when you apply negation to an and operand you put the negations inside and switch the and operand to an or operand on the other hand negation of a or b can be written as negation of a and negation of b uh, so similar thing applies here we put the negations inside and switch the or operator to an and operator so if we say that neither a nor b should be part of the team we say not of a and not of b that is both cannot be part of the team now that we have understood these operands let's take a, a, a look at a problem on team selection let us apply what we have learned about logical expressions with the help of a uh, lr set on team selection consider the following lr set k l m n p q r s u and w are the only 10 members in a department there is a proposal to form a team from within the members of the department subject to the following conditions so there are a bunch of conditions given so to express this uh, we will uh, use the statement uh, with the letter of the person so suppose we say k k indicates that uh, person k is part of the team not of k indicates that person k is not part of the team so let us take a look at the conditions and write them down as logical expressions so the first condition is a team must include exactly one among p r and s so we saw the way to represent exactly one so to say that something must have exactly one we should say that it should have only p or only r or only s so first let us write down only p only p can be written down as p and not of r and not of s similarly only r can be written down as negation of p and r and negation of s similarly only s can be written down as not p and not r and s so the these three terms represent only p only r only s they are connected by logical ors because they consider uh, they are the different cases involved in this particular condition so the first condition can be written down as this logical expression let's move on to the next condition the next condition is a team must include either m or q but not both 
so the wording of this uh, condition is different but this condition is also exactly one between m or q so since it is exactly one between m or q we can write this as only m or only q so only m is m and negation of q or negation of m and q so the second condition can be written down as this expression the third condition is if a team includes k then it must also include l and vice versa so k implies l and vice versa means that l implies k so this is a biconditional we can write this down as k double arrow l the fourth condition is if a team includes one among s u and w then it should also include the other two so there are two possible cases either s u and w are there in the team or none of these three are there in the team so first term when all three are there in the team we say that s is true and u is true and w is true or s is not true and u is not true and w is not true so s is either part of the team and u is part of the team and w is part of the team or s is not part of the team u is not part of the team and w is not part of the team therefore either all three are there or none of the three are there now that we have written down expression 4 let us take a look at expression 5 expression 5 says that l and n cannot be members of the same team so we are basically saying that l and n cannot be true or negation of l and n by de morgan's law we can write this as negation of l or negation of n similarly the sixth condition is l and u cannot be members of the same team this is exactly same as the condition 5 where instead of n they have put u so we can say negation of l and u that is negation of l or negation of u now that we have written down the logical expressions for each of these conditions we can then move on to answering the individual questions now the answering individual questions basically is a uh, assigning truth values according to the conditions given in the question and using these expressions assigning the truth value for the remaining conditions uh, remaining uh, parameters so if we are told that k is part of the team we will set k to be true and if k is true then l is true if l is true then n is false if n is false if l is true then u is false so basically using these logical uh, expressions we can solve to find the truth value of the remaining variables let's say take a look with the help of a uh, uh, question so the next question is what could be the size of the team that includes k so the team includes k so we know that k is true now if k is true l is true if l is true then l and n cannot be part of the same team so if l is true then n has to be false so we put f here if l is true similarly l and u can't be part of the same team so if l is true u has to be false so we put f over here so here true represents that the person is part of the team f represents that that person is not part of the team so basically we have to calculate how many people are part of the team by counting the number of t's so we have come till this uh, we have put values for k l n and u now that we have put these values let us see the other uh, conditions from fourth conditions we can see that if u is not present then s and w also cannot be present similarly if s is not present either p or r should be present suppose uh, we consider these two cases separately so in case 1 we say that p is true and r is false and in case 2 we say p is false and r is true we we'll let us copy the values for the other uh, uh, variable so we say true true false 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 okay now that we have the uh, values for the remaining uh, variables we can see that only m and q are left from uh, the second condition we can say that one of m or q has to be true uh, exactly one of m or q has to be true so in this case if m is true then uh, q is false or if m is false then q is true similarly if m is true q is false or if m is false q is true so we get that uh, there are four cases possible this case has two cases sub cases and this case has two sub cases so total of four sub cases are possible now what is the size of the team in each case 
So to calculate the size of the team, we basically have to count the number of T's in each case. Uh, T represents two, that is that person is part of the team. So let us calculate uh, the number of people. So there is case 1A, 1B, 2A and 2B. So 1A, uh, let us count the number of people in the team. So the number of people in the team is 1, 2, 3, 4 and that is it. So there are 4 people in 1A case. Similarly, for 1B, we get 1, 2, this is a miss, 3, 4. Again, we get 4 people. 2A, let us count the number of people, 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, there are 4 people in 2A. And in 2B, there is 1, 2, there is, these are not counted, 3 and 4. So, there are 4 people in 2B. So, in all the 4 cases, the size of the team that includes K is 4. Therefore, a team uh, including K can be formed in such a way that it has exactly four members. So the answer to this question is, answer is four. Now that we have solved this question using the logical expressions, let's take a look at the next question. So the next question is, in how many ways can a team be constituted so that the team includes N? So now here the, uh, we can say that N is part of the team, so N is true. Now since n is true, uh, 1 of l or n has to be false, so l has to be false. From 3 we can say that since l is false, k is false. Now since uh, we have uh, taken care of condition 1, uh, condition 3 and condition 5. Now if n is false and l is false, if l is false, condition 6 is met. Now u can be either true or false. So let us consider these cases separately. In the first case, we will consider u to be true. Now this condition has been done. If u is true, s and w are also true. Now if s is true, then p and r are false and 1 of m and q is true. So they are false true, true false. So these are the two cases corresponding to one. So there is one a, one b uh, case uh, involved in this configuration. Now let us consider the case when u is false. So we'll copy over the other numbers. Uh, we know that uh, n is part of the team. If n is part of the team, l is not part of the team and k is not part of the team. So this is case 2. This is the basic information that we know. Now if u is false, s and w are also false. Now one of p and r should be true. So let us copy over these uh, values. So f, f, t, f, f, f. So in the first case, we'll consider P is true and R is false. And in the uh, next case, we'll consider P is false and R is true. So now again, we are left with M and Q. We'll consider them as true or false, false true. And again, true or false and false true. So we have seen that there are two sub possibilities in each of the three cases. So we have three cases into two possibilities for m and q. So the total number of cases that exist, that is like we will get 1a, 1b, 2a, 2b, 3a, 3b. So the total number of cases are 6 cases. Therefore, the number of ways a team can be made such that the team includes n is 6 ways. So the answer to this question is 6. Now let's move on to the next question. What would be the size of the largest possible team? Now here we are not given any uh, variable that can be set to true. So we have to think about how we should go about answering this. The brute force method would be to uh, go about assuming different values as true. But we should think logically. We see the biggest hint in the form of condition 4. In condition 4, either one block of three people are part of the team or they are not part of the team. That's a huge block of three people. So to maximize the number of people in the team, we should always set that to be true. So we can begin by assuming that S, U and W are part of the team. So this is true, this is true, this is true. Because since S is part of the team, we can say that P and R are not part of the team. Now since U is part of the team, L is not part of the team and as L is not part of the team, K is not part of the team. Now since L is not part of the team, condition 5 is satisfied. So N can or cannot be part of the team. But we want to maximize the number of people in the team. So we will say that N is part of the team. 
so we'll set this to be true now we are left with m and q which can be true or false and false or true so uh, between them there will be one player and the remaining number of people are n s u and w so the number of people in this team are s u w n and m or q so there are five people in this uh, team so the max size of this team is five so uh, to maximize uh, the number of people we have to essentially maximize the number of trues so whenever you are given an option of putting either true or false like we had in the case of n we logically put true because we want to maximize the number of trues in this case now that you have understood this question let us move on to the next question so the next question is who can be a member of the team of size 5 we have just seen the max team that can be formed the largest team that can be formed is s u w uh, n and m or q so a uh, team of size 5 is only uh, only uh, two possibilities exist which are written down by this team so essentially from the options given we can see that only m can be a member of this team therefore the correct answer is option 3 let's move on to the next question the next question is who cannot be a member of team of size 3 now uh, if we see the conditions carefully we see that the first condition entails us to select one person the second condition makes us select another person so just on these two conditions the minimum team size is 2 so basically a team of size 3 is a very small team so for us to have a very small team we will have to make uh, as set as many people to false as possible so let us consider the possibilities now one way to go about this is to set each of these options as true and then find out whether a team of 3 is possible but we can eliminate some options by using basic logic till now we have seen that m and q are exactly symmetric we have always been getting true false false true that basically means that they can be used interchangeably there is no difference between them this is because if you see condition 2 the condition 2 is a symmetric condition that is it equally constrains m and q there is no difference between these two being part of the team now if both of them are equally constrained uh, it cannot happen that m cannot be part of the team but q can be part of a team of size 3 therefore if either both are right or both are wrong so both of them cannot be uh, uh, right at the same time so we will eliminate these two options now we are left with l n and p now when they say ki who cannot be a member of team of size 3 they are essentially asking given the small number of people they are essentially asking that how many uh, for how many people a team of size 3 is not possible here because number 3 is small generally it's testing for the minimum number of people that the team can have with a particular person now let us see l and n between l and n we see that condition 5 is symmetric it restricts l and n equally because uh, both of them can either be part of the team or not be part of the team depending on this condition but l is restricted by another condition that is condition 3 which says that if l is part of the team then k is not part of the team so if you have to minimize the number of people that are part of the team we can say that the minimum number of people uh, that are part of the team when l is part of the team is one at least one higher than the minimum team size containing n so the min team size with l will be greater than min team size with n so between these two options we can see for sure that n cannot be the one which will be uh, impossible because if n is impossible then l will also be impossible so we can eliminate this option so now we have two cases p and l now let us check these two cases individually now we are uh, we are going to set first p is equal to true so if p is equal to 2 r is uh, false s is false is uh, if s is false u and w are false now because we are trying to minimize the number of people that are part of the team uh, we can uh, since u is already false uh, condition 6 is satisfied but we don't want to take uh, members into the team unnecessarily 
so we will put f also as false because f is false k is false and uh, n can be true or false let us see we need one of m and q so this is true false false true and n is true so we see that we can make a team of size 3 of the form p n m or q so this is a valid team given the conditions so this is a team of size 3 containing p so option 4 is wrong now let us see l now if l is true k is true if l is true u is false and n is false now if u is false s is false w is false now one of p or r must be true that is uh, one of these two true false and this should be false true similarly m and q at least one of them should be true so you will get the team minimum team size as k l m or q and p or r so we see that the minimum team that contains l is 4 we cannot form a team of size 3 containing l so l cannot be a member of team of size 3 so the correct answer is option 1 now that we have solved this team selection problem using logical expressions let us see how we can use logical expressions on arrangement problems generally it's uh, less applicable in arrangement problems but a particular case where it comes to be handy is when we have to represent negative information so quite often in arrangement problems we are given information like this person is not part of this group or this is not the case in such cases what do we do we represent that information as not of a this is useful in reducing the information that is available to us to a manageable level let's take a look of uh, look at an arrangement problem to see what can be done so consider the following problem 10 friends a b c d e f g h i j study in different schools among hps dps oak ridge and kv they study in different standards among 7th 8th 9th and 10th the number of friends in each school and are distinct and there is at least one friend in each school the number of friends in each standard are different and there is at least one friend in each standard so basically it's saying there are 10 people and uh, there are four different integers that sum up to 10 now since there are four different integers and the min integer is 1 we can say that these integers will have to be 1 2 3 and 4 because there cannot be any uh, 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 set of natural numbers uh, can, uh, such that the sum of those natural numbers is equal to 10 other than these four so we know that these are the four uh, uh, number of people in each of the different standards and in each of the different schools now that we have decoded this information there are uh, there is additional information given uh, this additional information is that maximum number of friends study in HPS so essentially four people are there in HPS and maximum number of friends are in 8th standard so there are four people in 8th standard both B and G study in DPS and in 10th standard except B and G no two friends are studying in the same school and in the same standard D who studies in KV is in 9th standard C and E are in the same school while A and J are in the same standard H and I are neither studying in the same school nor same standard H studies in 7th standard and F studies in KV B studies in the same school as J and studies in the same standard as E. So a lot of information is given. Let's begin by first making a table of the form, uh, this form. So here we say what the schools are. The schools are HPS, DPS, Oak Ridge and KV. In this column person, we'll write down which person are definitely there in these particular schools. Other in four, we're, here we'll put down who is not there and the number of people are there or not there in this school. Similarly, we'll make a table for standard as shown in the screen. So, uh, let us put down the information that we have been given. Firstly, I've been given that B and G are there in DPS and 10 standard. So, in DPS, we'll put BG. Similarly, in 10 standard, we'll put BG. Another thing that we have been given is that except BG, no two friends are studying in the same school and in the same standard. D is in KV. So, this is D and is in 9 standard. C and E are in the same school and A and J are in the same standard. H and I are neither in uh, the same school nor in the same standard. H is in 7th standard and F studies in KB. So F is here. B studies in the same school as J. So uh, B is there here. So J must be in DPS and he is in the same standard as E. So this person is over here. 
we have been also been given the hps as four people and eight standard as four people the other numbers are 321 and 321 over here now since three people are already there this must have three people since two people are already there this cannot have one people so this is two and this is one uh, similarly three people are already there and it cannot be four because eight has the most number of people so the number of people in uh, kv uh, in 10 standard is three therefore we get the table as such from the information that is given first information that is given now it has been given that c and d are in the same school let us see any bracket where we can adjust c and d since this place has only uh, one person c and e cannot be in the same bracket moreover this part is already fully filled this part is fully filled similarly this part is fully filled so let's ignore these boxes now c and e have to be in the same school they can't be here because this contains only one person so c and e are over here similarly a and j are in the same standard now if a and j are over here this will be three and if a and j are in the standard again this will be three or four but the max value that these two can take is two therefore a and j cannot be in seventh or ninth they have to be in eighth now that we have placed all of these people let's see who are missing in each of the this as far as schools are concerned a is not placed b is there c is there d is there e is there f is there g is there h and i are not there over here a is placed b is placed C is not placed, D is no, uh, placed, E, F is not placed, G is placed, uh, H is placed, I is not placed and uh, J is placed. Uh, from the information given in the uh, table we know that I cannot be here. So we write it as not of I. Now we have been given that H and I are not part of the same school or the same standard. So one of H or I should be here, they cannot be together over here. So essentially H and I is not true. So both of them cannot be in the same place at the same time. So either it will have H or I and A will be the fourth person. Similarly, this will have I or H. Now we have the uh, at the same time. So this is the uh, possible configuration for schools. We have been given that uh, no two people are part of the same uh, uh, school as well as same classroom other than b and g so a and c are part of the same uh, school so they can't be part of the same classroom so we can say that c cannot be part of 8th standard now let us consider the situation where c is part of 7th standard if c is part of 7th standard then it can't h can't be a part of hps so i has to be part of hps if I is part of HPS, then H has to be Oak Ridge. Now, the remaining people over here will be adjusted here, that is F and I. But we see a uh, contradiction over here. Here, both A and I are part of the same standard as well as the same school. So, this cannot be. So, our initial assumption that C is part of 7th standard is wrong. So, let's go back to that. So, C is not part of 7th standard. Okay. Now C is not part of 7th standard, so we will write this as not of C. So if we see the remaining options, C is not part of 7th or 8th, so we will say that C is part of 9th. Now that C is part of 9th, we know that H is alone, this is 1, this is 2. So H is alone, uh, the remaining people I and F are over here. And uh, because I is here, it cannot be part of uh, uh, HPS along with H, uh, along with A. So H has to be part of HPS and I has to be part of Oak Ridge. So this is the final configuration and everybody has been placed. So as we saw from this question, writing information as negation of statements has a, uh, been able, uh, has a, helped us visualize what information has to be placed where. If we keep on writing negation of uh, uh, cases, we will reach a case where only one case is possible. This is a much shorter way of retaining logical information, especially negative logical information. Uh, so uh, though uh, logical expressions do not find a lot of application in arrangement questions, uh, we see that uh, negation of not operator has a lot of application as far as uh, arrangement questions are concerned, especially those where we cannot draw out big tables like here. So now that you have seen how to use logical expressions for uh, solving LR sets, 
I would suggest to you that please go back to LRSets that you found difficult, that you found it uh, difficult to manage all the information that was given. Then uh, read those sets again, convert the information that is given in that into logical expressions and once you have converted that into a logical expression, try solving the set. This will do a lot of, uh, this will be extremely helpful in distilling down the information into a manageable way. Once you have distilled down the information, you can think of how to use it. Uh, generally, when people are bombarded with a lot of information like that, a lot of logical information, they find it very difficult to make sense of it. Uh, but most people are able to handle expressions because of our uh, long exposure to mathematics, logical expressions generally are easier for people to understand and handle. So try to develop some skill in this. This will help you a lot in terms of solving LR sets. Thank you for tuning in.